Hey guys, Gabe from the Disciples here, and today we have Leon's top 32 uh, profile from the ICS London. So, yeah, Leon, what did you play today? Uh, so, I played Mathmex. I know people are usually used to me playing in Vault, was probably the closest thing to like my old Vault builds, where I just like simple OTKs, and then uh, it's actually got a good going first play as well, and then just like one card combo, so, and loads of hand traps. Um, We'll do shout outs first. So, first and foremost, shout out to the disciples. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, like, um, I don't really have that much time to test. It's mainly just locals. So, like, all the insight that they help me with, um, I wouldn't be able to do it without them. So, 100% disciples. Shout out Brotherhood. That's the only place I really play. So, um, without them, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be playing as much. So, Brotherhood. Shout out sponsors, um, Card Market and. Meta Max, yeah, shout out Meta Max 100%. And uh, I suppose Gamers are pro, I love this jersey. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could get into the profile now. It's an angry deck. Okay, so of course, best card, free circular, one card combo. Do I need to expand the cards though? Uh, might as well. Oh, well sure. uh, sends a Mathematic card for cost, it's a special summon itself, coming attack with one monster. And then when you summon another Mathematic, it searches a spell or trap, which is. Your interruption going first or an extender going second when you're trying to push for game. We've got three diameter, which is a normal summon. It reborns one uh, from grave, uh, level four from grave, uh, or normal summon. And then when you use it to XYZ, it gives XYZ a negate for the turn. So that's protection on your pushes from an interruption. And then it's also on your opponent's turn with the trap cards, another interruption on top of uh, the removal. Uh, play two Sigma, which is the extender. You send it off of circular, and then you can reborn it back from the grave um, if you have no monsters in your extra monster zone, and that will trigger the circular to search, which is the one card combo. Uh, two addition and two subtraction, more extenders. Uh, boost by a thousand, summon itself, floor by a thousand, summon itself. Uh, why is it two of each? Um, they're just all extenders, so you don't really want to draw multiples. Um, I typically side out one addition if I need two. Because um, if it's a thing where I need more hand traps, I feel three extenders can get me there. And um, ultimately, you only just want, you mainly just need circular to play. So it's nice that the fact, even if, you know, if you don't see this, if you have a uh, normal summon and extender, mm -hmm. you can potentially still get to the XYZ, which could search it. Yeah, and Sigma is for like the grind game, right? Or if like, first one gets interrupted, you have a second one, which sends circle later. Um, I mean, it's, it's not, you don't necessarily want to draw it, but it's not that bad if you do draw it. It's the same, it's probably a better X, I'd say it's a better X than these two because it's, it's better in the grind. Sure. Um, but yeah, two's fine. I always, always keep two in. Also, so. the rarities. I mean, you, it's me. Yeah. I, think, I, know, I know it's been a while, I know it's been a while, but... We, we... <laughs> Something's never changed. Yeah, we stay consistent. And then for the math mix, on traps, it's just one equation, one super factorial. Equations are monster reborn for math mech. And super factorial is your main interruption. So you special summon up to three math mix in grave. Uh, you usually want to do two and a diameter and then you immediately synchro XYZ with it but we only play XYZs um, but we could go into that when we get to the extra deck. Then for more extenders you've got Parallel Seed. Um, this because they come out as level four our rank four searches uh, any math mech card so it helps us play um, and it helps us um, kill as well because uh, it's Cybus so it all goes together and then we play one eccentric and one Santa Claus. Uh, previously, I was playing the kaiju, the light kaiju, because we play small world and these bridge really well with all the ha uh, all the hand traps and other cards that we're playing. I think every card, every monster in our deck gets us the circular, apart from parallel exceed. Um, and then I wanted eccentric because it's either a monster out or back row removal. I'm more so a back row removal for a game one floodgates if I go up against something like Labyrinth. Um, so with Small World plus the Eccentric, that's four copies in the main deck by playing the one card basically. And then Santa Claus for the same reason. It's a, a out to, easy out to arise heart if you have Small Worlds. Or, and we also play um, other cards as well that we can Small World into potentially. Um, and I was watching Pac's video uh, for the, just before the YCS around Santa Claus being able to also out to Studo that Sprite sometimes summon. And I realized that this deck doesn't have an easy out to it. And we was playing Jizakiri before. So if the if you're worried about them getting the draw, the whole point of you um, tributing their monsters to out it. And if you don't out it, then you're probably in a bad position anyway. If you had the Kaiju, they're probably killing you with it. If they do this and they draw a card, they're probably still winning regardless. But 
I thought I preferred this and having that additional benefit against Sprite, um, I thought might be relevant if anyone was still playing that combo after it won the YCS Lima, I believe. Did it make any difference if it was Santa Claus or Jizukuru? Uh, the only bridge that it doesn't work with is Cyframe Driver, where Jizukuru Woods and I've got a centric. Oh, this one. Yeah. And then hand traps, we've got two Vela, three Imperm, three Ash, three Draw, and then Gamma. So from my last list that I played for the UK Open, I wanted to main the Gamma because there was a couple of people that were maining the draws and getting hit with draw game one on say a small world or silent mining can pretty much end your turn so i wanted to punish them with the gamma also the silent mining pitch and if they ash you could punish them with the gamma and if there was anyone maining shifter i just wanted to have a chance with it and then obviously going second it's really strong uh, main deck draw um i agree i saw the how impactful the main deck draw was against my deck and i saw some overlaps into other decks as well um, in some situations it just stops cash terror if they, if, they start, if they have to start with the field spell or terraforming or their hands is really weak. Um, it can be good against Runic and typically you want to pair it up with something else and it, so that it has that additional impact. And then also going first, it won me a lot of games because you'll have your Super Factorial and Decode Heat Soul, uh, Decode Toka Heat Soul um, as your primary boards. And then adding the draw on top of that with the Lepation um, Sense, it just usually gets you there. And yeah, it won me a lot of game ones. It won me the game one of the top 64 against Flunder. I drew it for turn and then drawed him in, in my turn to OTKM when he tried to do uh, his Flunder effects. It won a Dark World uh, game, game one. Um, going, when I went first, it was just, yeah, it was really good. Happy, really happy I made it anyway. I uh, didn't mean Nibiru. Um, it was Vela or Nib, right? Yeah, it was actually Vela or Nib, but I felt like Vela had more Overlap into random matchups like uh, maybe even Labyrinth. There's other, other things that Nib would 100% be dead for. Um, so I thought Vela was better. And also, Vela is a better small world bridge um, in general. So I thought, yeah. I definitely would 100% keep playing Vela because there was a couple of games where I, I could have uh, lo lost to Denko. And this is probably the only out to Denko in this deck. So. I'll definitely keep playing it. Maybe free in, in, in the future if Denko comes more popular, but yeah. And that is all the monsters, and then it's just consistency spells, free silent mining to get to your one card combo and free small world for the same reason. If you already have the one card combo, you can small world into a hand trap or small world into Gamma to out or Rise Heart or into the eccentric or Santa Claus, etc. So, I guess, what do you do with the Gamma when you rise out? So if you go to Mauro, you got Gamma, uh, and that's your Rise Out. What do you do with the monsters? Oh, you just make IP. Or you can um, tribute it to Special Summon a Mathmic with the Rank 4. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You guys can make Trans School with Gamma as well. Oh, you can make, you can make you can Trans School with Gamma. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. It's fine. You just the bodies, the bodies is enough. As long as you can update, as long as you can update and have a link two or three and swing clean, you're fine. That's fine. And then the extra deck, we play two Alan Bershin. Um, this is your main rank four. It's, um, you only use, use the detach two effect to. Oh, well, I only use the detach two effect to search a mathmet card, which is part of your combo. You would um, search the trap off of circle after you've dumped sigma to special summon that you'll make this to search the diameter and then you're able to um, get your trap with three Mathmex engraved, including the negate, and also along the way make Cyburst Wicked to search another diameter for follow-up, and that's just the basic one. And then plus two draws, one on your turn, one on your opponent's turn off the heat so, and then you rely on that plus whatever other hand traps you have mm -hmm. as the basic combo, so yeah. And then one location, which is your main interruption. Uh, this is what you summon off Super Factorial. Um, it, sends a card from hand, spell, trap, and monster zone um, by detaching uh, one, two, or three, um, whatever is relevant to the field. And then if you make it with diamond, it also gets in the gate for that turn. Um, so yeah, so much value off of it. And if you're able to stop your opponent with like a draw to the point where you don't need to use this, then you just use it on your turn to have that as a negate. Then you summon the diamond to make this one as a negate, and then you have more extenders to do your OTK. Uh, which is obviously access code and update jammer. 
We play two of each because this is your main OTK and because Circular locks you into only attack with one monster, you don't want any of these to not be non-existent from Kashtera banishing them. Um, also, the nice thing about this is that when you're OTKing, if they have more than one interruption, um, or I suppose when you're comboing, the only main interrupt, uh, main gets you get is the negate off the amateur uh, that the XYZ has, and the negate off of uh, Lingaribo if they have um, spells or traps, low face downs, or if you think they might have impum. So these are usually your two interruptions, and if they have something like a nib on top of that, you're probably getting stopped, um, but you're able to search the super factorial plus whatever hand traps you have to stop them and then try and push again. And having two of each means that that next turn you still have the OTK. Also means you can activate like circular into unicorn, right? Like for example, with the unicorn you, you imperm it and then you, you activate circular. It, even they can loop one of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, the thing is... Did it happen happened? Like the Diablos one and unicorn the other? No, no, no. They didn't. I don't think no cash terror uh, players got to the Diablo side. That's enough hand traps. Yeah, like and then the ones that the only the main thing that happened was that they'll get to unicorn and not Ashfriosis, and then they'll banish one. But they never. They saw two of these and they never went for them, um, which I think is incorrect. But yeah. And then I play uh, IP Appaloosa. Um This is just another interruption if you have a lot of extenders. Um, you're able to end an IP and then your IP into Appaloosa. Um, usually, to depending on how you're feeling, if, you, if you're worried about um, Ghost Spell or something on your trap, you could try and make Appaloosa early or you can hold it until afterwards and then make it with free materials. Or sometimes you have so much um, extenders that you have an extra body just to make free straight away. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It was just more interruption, basically. I thought, I thought it was the best target. There was also considering. Evermax, but I felt like Kaijus were in the format, so out and talents, etc. So it was easy to out and unicorn, but I didn't think the removal from the unicorn would be enough if they was able to play through the location as it is. So, um, and then your turn one heat soul for your draw two, uh, transcode to part of the uh, OTK. Also, having this co linked uh, makes it so your monsters can't be targeted, which came up a couple of times. So you're able to sometimes do this and then this will be two-way, this was free free. And then I was able to just out like a, a cash a cash terror friend or about it, be able to do anything. And um, also then if you're able to make this, I think there was a time where I was able to make this on the, the fur hire link free because it was pointing up and then I was able to make access code next to it so it couldn't be targeted. Oh yeah, it's under which with Imperm, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a beat Imperm is actually. And then I played one Splash Mage, this is like the backup plan if you get hand trapped too many times to still try and work your way up into a heat soul to try and draw something. Uh, one Wicked, it searches follow up in your turn one combo, it just search the demo for the uh, next turn. And then one Almirage in case you have a weak hand and you have a hand trap and parallel exceed and still be able to play. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And then side deck, I played two nib, two bell. Um, so I didn't feel comfortable cutting nib completely because I felt like there's a chance that people still may not respect it. And um, I wanted to have it just in case. Um, and there's still, still, I played against two sword so as well, and it's good against sword so. Also, going first, you'd want to usually side out the eccentric and the Santa Claus. And this is still a nice bridge for the gammas if you're keeping them in. Um, whether it's relevant for the matchup, you put both in. If it's not, you just put one in just as a bridge. And having Nib plus your basic boards, um, it's really hard for them to play around Nib and break the boards. So it's a good chance you're dropping it and then going off the next turn. Goal spell is to protect you from bestials and um, the certain decks that it hits, Runic, Labyrinth. It's still, it's still a good card, but I don't think it was generic enough to main, so I like siding it. I was originally siding three, but when I was doing um, siding patterns for Despia, I couldn't fit the third one in, so I ended up cutting it and tried to put something in for another matchup. Um, I think it was either the Curry Car, I think it was Curry Car I ended up putting in for it. Just uh, I found that I didn't actually use this at all tournament to be honest. I never drew it against cash, I never needed to small word into it. But I usually side it in going second, I'll side in these three and then um, some other. Might as well just do it now. Book of Moons against cash for going second. Do you put them in going first? Oh no, I also put Harpy's Feather Duster in as well. Put these in going second against cash and then I took out the draws 
and maybe uh, two free draws, parallel edition, and something else. I think it was maybe a one Vela because um, I was worried about those hand traps being dead if they shifted me. And I felt like having this sort of coverage, you had the base against a rise heart, I mean, against the full combo. Mm. And then all of these, all of these hit a rise heart pass with their non engine. And then you have the small world targets as well, the Santa Claus and the Gammas. So I thought I had enough coverage into cash with that. Mm -hmm. And it, it worked out fine. Um, I don't anything else. And then Book of Moons, uh, it was Book of Moons, Nibs, and oh, I'm not sure it now. Anti Spell's going first. The Cypress production part. Yeah, that's all good. And then, yeah, free Cosmic for the uh, back row destruction. So you have these, Harpies, and the small word in eccentric for back row matchups. And then one call by the grave for going first, um, Despia, Shifter, etc. Did you like the deck? <laughs> oh yeah, I love the deck, man. Um, like I said, it's the closest thing to Invoked uh, that I could play. This fits my play style. I'm not really one to want to grind out long events. I feel like if I'm having grand games after grand games for 12, 12 rounds, I'm down to misplay at some point. And yeah, I felt like I played well enough. I had a couple of fortunate moments, um, but overall, I was happy with the, the performance. So. I was angry. How many times you got bestialed? Uh, three times, oh. but. Oh, three, well, three matches. Oh. oh, well, four. Top 32 as well. Four. Oh, yeah. Uh, congrats. Cool. And see you guys next time. Cool. Cheers.